It's real good. Banjo Kazooie is one of those rare titles that was actually made with a glowing spark of inspiration and passion for gaming. It's not one of these soulless, droning cash grabs. It's an illustrious, unforgettable experience. These games are older than dinosaur dirt, and yet people still fondly remember Banjo. Even if you never played the games, you know about him. It's a bear wearing a backpack that he jammed a little bird into. Who comes up with this? It's amazing! You're dropped right into a cheery, colorful world, bursting with characters and liveliness. There's hundreds of things to collect and discover. You start humming along to that classic music and boom, you've been playing for five hours and it just went by like that. The game is fun as hell because it offers up a lot of simple pleasures like the little Jinjos. You walk into them and it goes, it's just so immediate and satisfying. You aren't driving around some barren wasteland looking for what you gotta do or building some stupid car for six hours. My car is finally ready. This car sucks. You just go in, pick up a shiny puzzle piece, and it plays a little animation. I love that. It's such a straightforward concept that game studios have tried again and again and again to replicate, but Banjo stands at the top because it is a simple game, but it's deceptively simple. There's an extra level of care and effort and polish that's very apparent in the nuanced level designs. They feel expansive, but they aren't so big that you'll get lost or spend forever just getting to where you need to go. The trend in gaming is make the maps bigger, make it bigger, and you end up with these big empty worlds with nothing in them. They're visually impressive, but they don't service the gameplay, they just hamper it. In Banjo-Kazooie, nothing is taken for granted. It's complete and cohesive. Everything serves a purpose. The bear and bird are named after instruments, so you collect music notes. You get honey because he's a bear, a banjo. It's kind of a goofy instrument. Likewise, Banjo just accepts this childlike world where you fight onions with eyeballs. He's just like, yeah, man, this is real life. A kazoo, on the other hand, just makes this obnoxious sound, and that's the character. Kazooie is just this jaded, cynical brat. There's a part where these little polar bear kids are crying because their dad's been missing for a couple weeks, and Kazooie goes, Your dad's probably dead, kids. Like, <laughs> what? Kazooie? The soundtrack does this amazing thing where it transforms depending on where you are in the level. Say, you're outside, the music is all upbeat and catchy, then you go into the cave and it turns into this echo, just mysterious mix of the song, and you go underwater, it sounds like your speakers have been submerged. How come you don't do that, Sonic R? What are you, stupid? Each level has a theme, you know? There's a haunted graveyard, there's a beach, and each one has a vantage point where you can just soak in everything and familiarize yourself. My favorite level, Click Clock Wood, is just a big tree, but then you walk out a door, and there are four versions of that level, one for each season of the year. So you'll help this beaver out in the summer, right? And then you come back in winter, and then you can swim into his house, and he gives you a prize. It's kind of like every component of the game is a puzzle piece, and they all snap together to form the big picture. It's a warm, charming game with a lot of humor and a lot of energy. Playing Banjo-Kazooie just makes you happy. In other words, it's a masterpiece. Yeah,